Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to talk about another property of stars, which is called their surface temperature. And there's a relationship between their surface temperature and their color. So, let's say we have three stars. Star A, which is a very small, reddish-looking star. Star B, which is a larger, kind of like our sun, a yellowish, orangey-looking star. And then let's say we have star C, which is a very big blue star. The colors are associated with their temperatures, and the temperature is associated with the types of radiation that we get from the stars. So when we look at the radiation curve from a star like star A, a very small red star, we find that the majority of the radiation is emitted in the infrared band, and the peak of the radiation occurs at a much higher wavelength, much longer wavelengths, for example, 950 nanometers. The visible light spectrum here is just towards the left of the spectrum of the emission. Remember, all stars emit radiation like a black body. And so we have this typical radi uh, radiation curve. And you can see that the predominant radiation for a small red star is in the infrared. Peak wavelength, 950 nanometers. For a star like the Sun, the peak wavelength falls in the visible light range. And in this case, for example, let's say 600 nanometers, which is very close to what the Sun puts out. And you can see that there's some UV radiated and some infrared, but at the center where the, the, the greatest amount of radiation falls is in the visible light range. Then if we look at star C, where the star is a big blue star, you can see that the radiation curve shows that there's much more radiation, they're much more luminous, and that a very large portion of radiation falls in the UV radiation. The visible light spectrum is over here. You can see that the peak occurs not in the visible light spectrum, but in the UV spectrum. And let's say that the peak wavelength is at 200 nanometers. Now, because of Wien's law, we're able to relate the temperature to the wavelength of that peak radiation. All we have to do is take the number 0.029 and divide it by that peak wavelength, and we actually get the surface temperature of those stars. So let's try it for star A. The temperature of star A is therefore equal to 0.0029 divided by the wavelength, which would be 950 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And so that will give us a temperature in Kelvin of, let's see, 0.0029 divided by 950 e to the 9 minus equals a temperature of about 3050 degrees Kelvin. So that would be one of those smaller red, reddish stars. Star B. So temperature of B would be equal to 0.0029 divided by 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That's 600 nanometers. So we get 0.0029 divided by 600 e to the 9 minus. And we get a temperature of, ooh, let me try that again. That didn't look good. 0.0029 divided by 600 e to the 9 minus. And... Uh, so the temperature of this one would be about 4,833 Kelvin, which is appropriate for kind of an orange-looking star. Next, we go to star C. So the temperature of star C is equal to 0.0029 divided by 200 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that star, let's see here, would have a surface temperature of 0.0029 divided by 200 e to the 9 minus. And we get 14,500, so 14,500 Kelvin. So notice with Wien's law, it's fairly straightforward to be able to tell the surface temperature of stars simply by realizing and measuring where the peak radiation lies. Small red stars in the infrared, medium-sized stars like the sun or smaller than the sun would be in the visible light range, and finally star C would be um, a very big, uh, very bright and big blue star with peak wavelength in the UV radiation band to the left of visible light, and those are very hot stars, as you can tell. So, Wien's Law, very handy way of telling how hot the surface temperature of a star is.